Welcome everyone to the CodeZultant channel. In today's video, we will be discussing the topic of conductors connected in parallel. Throughout this video, we will cover the requirements set forth in the electrical code, including the minimum size of conductors permitted for paralleling. Additionally, we will explore the rules that govern the parallel connection of conductors in separate raceways. So, without any delay, let's get started. There are several reasons for paralleling conductors in electrical installations. One of the main reasons is when there is a need for a high ampacity of feeders or service that exceeds the maximum available sizes listed in the ampacity tables. In such cases, paralleling multiple conductors allows for the combined ampacity to meet the required capacity. Another reason for paralleling conductors is when the required sizes are within the ampacity tables, but they are not commercially available. By paralleling smaller conductors, the desired ampacity can be achieved effectively. Furthermore, the difficulty of pulling and installing a single large cable can be a factor in opting for paralleling conductors. Large cables can be challenging to handle, maneuver, and install due to their size and weight. Paralleling smaller conductors provides more flexibility and ease of installation while still achieving the required ampacity. For these reasons, a total understanding of the paralleling requirements permitted in the electrical code is necessary before attempting to design a large electrical system or install these conductors. Section 3.10.2.1H provides specific information and requirements for the paralleling of conductors and should certainly be the first reference that every electrical practitioner would choose for an understanding of the basics of paralleling conductors. This subsection permits aluminum, copper-clad aluminum, and copper conductors that are at least 50 square millimeters or larger to be connected in parallel if these parallel conductors are electrically joined at both ends to form a single conductor. To install conductors in parallel, the paralleled conductors in each phase, polarity, neutral, grounded circuit conductor, equipment grounding conductor, or equipment bonding jumper must comply with all of the following. 1. Be the same length. To avoid excessive voltage drop and also to ensure equal division of current, different phase conductors must be located close together. To attain the requirements of having the same length, two, consist of the same conductor material. It is a requirement that all conductors of the same phase or neutral must be composed of the same conductor material. To illustrate this, let's consider an example where 12 conductors are being paralleled for a three phase, four wire, 400 Y, 230 volt AC circuit. In this scenario, it is permissible to install four conductors in each of the three raceways. It's important to note that the intention of the code is not to mandate that all 12 conductors must be exclusively copper or aluminum. However, the code does emphasize that the individual conductors within each phase, grounded conductor, and neutral, which are being parallel, must be of the same material. In addition, the code does emphasize that the individual conductors within each phase, grounded conductor, and neutral, which are being parallel, must possess the same square millimeters area, insulation type, and be terminated in the same manner. Following all these rules, ensure that each set of parallel conductors carries the same ampacity. Where paralleled conductors are run in separate raceways or cables as specified in subsection 3.10.2.1H3, the cables or raceways with conductors shall have the same number of conductors and shall have the same electrical characteristics. In this context, electrical characteristics specifically refer to properties such as the raceway material. It is crucial to ensure that all raceways within a parallel set of conductors are of the same type. It is important to avoid mixing raceways with different physical characteristics. For example, if two of the raceways are rigid ferrous metal conduits and one raceway is a rigid non-metallic conduit, the conductor within the non-metallic conduit would carry more current compared to the conductors within each of the metal raceways. This discrepancy in current distribution would result in higher impedance in the conductors within the ferrous metal raceways compared to the PVC raceway. The increased current within the conductor of the PVC raceway has the potential to cause overheating and insulation damage. Additionally, each phase and each neutral or grounded conductor must be present within each separate raceway, auxiliary gutter, cable tray, cable bus assembly, cable, or cord. In illustration shown, a three-phase, four-wire system where three sets of 250 square millimeters conductors are paralleled for each phase in the neutral. There should be one 250 square millimeters conductor for phase A, one for phase B, one for phase C, and one for the neutral within each of the three raceways. This ensures proper distribution and balance of electrical current. Conductors of one phase, polarity, neutral, grounded circuit conductor, or equipment grounding conductor are not required to have the same physical characteristics as those of another phase, polarity, neutral, 
grounded circuit conductor, or equipment grounding conductor. An exception of 3.0.1.3, B, 1, allows conductors to be installed in non-metallic raceways for underground applications. In this exception, the conductors can be arranged as isolated phase installations, with all conductors of one phase contained within one conduit, all conductors of another phase in a separate conduit, and all conductors of the final phase in its own conduit. The neutrals for these phases are then placed within the final conduit. It is important to note that these raceways must be installed in close proximity to each other, typically in a duct bank arrangement. However, caution must be exercised to ensure that no steel rebar or other ferrous metal is installed between these raceways. Compliance with Section 3.0.1.20b is necessary when connecting these raceways into a ferrous metal enclosure to ensure proper installation and safety measures are followed. In Section 3.10.2.1h4, the application of an adjustment factor is to be considered based on the guidelines provided in subsection 3.10.2.6. b. a. Furthermore, Section 3.10.2.1h5 and h6 specifically address the requirements for equipment grounding conductors and equipment bonding jumpers. The sizing of equipment grounding conductors should adhere to the specifications outlined in 2.50.6.13 which is based on the overcurrent device that is supplying power to the conductors. Similarly, the sizing of equipment bonding jumpers should follow the guidelines provided in 2.50.5.13, which is based on 2.50.3.17 and takes into account the size of the conductors being used. In summary, the minimum size of conductors permitted to be connected in parallel is 50 square millimeters for each phase, polarity neutral and grounded circuit. Paralleling conductors is a method employed in various situations where there is a need for higher ampacity beyond the limitations of standard sizes. This approach is used when commercially available sizes are not suitable or when the installation process can be simplified by using multiple smaller conductors instead of a single large cable. Additionally, conductors belonging to the same phase or neutral must be made of the same conductor material. This requirement ensures consistency and uniformity in parallel conductor installations, where the individual conductors within each phase, grounded conductor, and neutral should share the same material, insulation type, length, and other applicable characteristics. Thank you all for watching.